It's pretty simple. Texas Rangers win their first ever World Series. There's a list of teams that have never won a championship, and they were on it for a long, long time, and they are now off that list. In their 63rd season. That was in Arizona. Boy, did a lot of Rangers fans show up. I mean, I know it's a World Series and people travel, but holy cow. I know they the spring training's out there too, but uh, wow. Look at that. So if you're a Texas Rangers fan, uh, that was a 5 to nothing game there. And uh, they uh, beat them in five. They overcame a six-inning no-hitter uh, by one of the Diamondbacks pitchers. A team started as the Washington Senators, and they were the oldest uh, Big Four franchise that had never won a championship. Texas Rangers. So uh, a lot of people happy with that win. Uh, Sammy Sosa, who was, you saw him jumping around with the team. And uh, George W. Bush saw him jumping around with the team. And... Uh, that's the only time, by the way, that you'll see grown men hop up and down. Unless you're like an old school punk show, but I mean like in joy, not in enter, not in anger or anything like that. You know, the only time you'll see grown men jump up and down, straight up and down with joy, is when they're on a team that wins uh, a championship like that. Because they all run out. Uh, you know, yeah, they're full of excitement, huh? They're full of excitement and right. they don't know what to do, and so right. You you just like I bounce run, around. I'd run around in circles if that were me. I'd run around in circles. Right, but we're because hold it, you to that, when you win a championship, <laughs> I'm gonna be like, make sure you're running in circles. Don't keep, be hopping up and down. Keep an eye on me. Mm -hmm. I will. And Pound Cake is the Guardians manager, and he invites us into the dugout. I'm smacking butts. <laughs> and he, yeah, he's, he's not gonna be hop, hopping job. up and down. He's gonna be he's just <laughs> slapping butts. Oh, this is firm. This is plump. Uh, Great job. Plump. He's gonna be plump. out there <laughs> smacking cakes. <laughs> Uh-huh. Plump. <laughs> You're really trying to screw yourself out of that gig, aren't you? You can only... Oh God, everyone... Why is it... Nobody wants a guy whose first thought upon winning a championship is, I'm smacking I'm butts. I'm touching every butt I'm here. Touching <laughs> every... Want... every butt on this team is getting a big old handprint from pound cake. Don't you want transparency as a coach, as a manager? Don't you want that? Yes, but that's, all, that's the kind of transparency that's going to get you screwed out of this gig. <laughs> the transparency is good... But it's, it's also going to be a factor in the decision whether or not you're going to get hired. Mm, I don't know. He's going to want transparency in their uniforms. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't need to. I, don't manager shower with the team. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine he actually got an interview? These would be the questions. <laughs> when, let, when do we do our showers? Let, let me ask you this. Does the, Can we get smaller towels, please? <laughs> I want everybody showering with just washcloths, face no. cloths in there. No, it's he's like, oh, he makes a case for camaraderie. This is how you develop trust. Everybody showered together in high school, Jim, but it wasn't the gym coach that was showering with you. That guy was my history teacher. Did you guys shower, Pound Cake? So I actually... We never did. You didn't really? No. Why? Because no, nobody wanted to. Well, nobody wanted to, and I did it either. They didn't but make us. Did they, they didn't say get naked and shower. <laughs> change naked, and go back to guys. class. Um, so I actually didn't have to because I went to a vocational high school, so I never took PE in high school. Oh, okay. So the only, the only PE I, I've taken was in middle school, and in middle school, no one showered. It wasn't that serious. Like Right. That's kind of how it was for us. We, we didn't get, I mean, we were probably musty, but most middle school kids were musty anyways. Yeah, musty. If, if they, it was. If they, they stunk anyways, whether they went to the gym or not. So uh, We no. just didn't try that hard. Yeah, I don't think it really broke a sweat in, in high school or middle school gym. I was also, like, when the years that I had gym, I still was very small and didn't really sweat a lot or anything like that. So I could run around and not get stinky. So I really didn't hit puberty until I was about 15 or 16. I mean, everybody had it. We showered after wrestling practice. Well, and showered and yeah yeah and i okay well then, he didn't do pe he did pee -E. <laughs> well i did i did do track and i'm trying to think back there were yeah you'll get a little sweaty doing that but like at, like uh, i played lacrosse but we wouldn't go back to the locker room we'd just go home well, just go home and shower no there, but there were times i guess no i didn't I, I think it was also i was struggling with the gay thing so i didn't even want to draw attention to myself you didn't mm -hmm. want to get a boner at um, the gym 
it, it was just uncomfortable for me because I I got bullied real bad in like the the locker rooms and stuff. So I just was like, I just want to go here, do my extracurricular, not draw attention to myself. But there were kids that showered, and those were the guys that were used to it. Like the there were guys on the track team that were just trying to stay active when soccer wasn't in season. So the soccer students that were there. Um, they showered during so- after soccer practice, and mainly they, their teammates were on that team, so it was no big deal for them. They would just go in and shower, and I didn't look at them. I didn't even go over there. That was a different side of the locker room, so I just changed. And then the guys uh, that weren't in soccer that were on track, we all just put our nasty, musty, stinky clothes on and went home. Hmm. All right, well, that's one way to do it. I just thought that everybody went and showered after gym. Because well, you'd always did. have you'd always have dudes going into next period with like you know, stank wet no like oh. wet necks or something. I don't know you know you because you had to race to dry off and mm-hmm. then we went to Catholic school so we're throwing a shirt and a tie and a jacket back on and well with me it's a whole production either because my my la- it went by last name you you were in the class with people uh, up until like a certain point in the alphabet with your last name so I was either in first period gym or last period gym this was oh, when God, I was in imagine school. first period gym yeah, I was either miserable. Miserable. Jesus you get to school and you got to go right to gym yeah I was either in the first Sucks. period I think like sixth and seventh I was in first period gym and then eighth grade I was in last period gym of course I guess first period you could just like sleep into the last minute and then hop out go to gym well, and shower after that. Again, this was middle school, so I was taking the bus. There was no sleeping in. It was just oh. like a normal school day. Yeah. Um, and then, like, JVS, uh, I mean, I was working in carpentry all day, and I don't think they had a locker room at JVS. There was no one really – there was no sports teams. So there was people that played football, but they did that after school. They would take – they would either drive home or, uh, or drive to the high school or take the bus back to their home school. Hmm. So I don't know. I did opt out of swimming when we had swimming in gym because I didn't swim. God, you're so lucky. I wish I had But the pool at my high school was in an annex building outside the main. So you had to walk, even in the dead of winter, people were walking back and forth, yeah, to swimming in gym. We didn't have a pool when I was there. They got a pool eventually, but it was after I was already out of school. So there was no swimming classes. And again, it was really one of those things like if you had a gym class, you just didn't try that hard. Yeah, I would have like, thrived had I had at least had the classes I took. Pool. Mm. Like I get to wear a cute little speedo and I get to swim. This is <laughs> great. I would have been tired. I would have been perfect for my after school nap. Anyway, this all goes back to Pound Cake being in the running for the Tito Francona job. Yes. And they are talking to people with the Milwaukee Brewers. I know they were talking to a couple of guys from the Mets. Um and we're trying to get Pound Cake at least a sit down with those people. I've made some calls. I have been thus far rebuffed with extreme prejudice. But the Texas Rangers did grab their first uh, championship, and now it goes to the next team that has never won a championship. Uh, The team with the longest drought is the Minnesota Vikings, who played their first game about five months uh, after uh, the Rangers did in 1961. Rangers are still the Washington Senators. So, there are five major league franchises that are still without a World Series. That's the Colorado Rockies, the Milwaukee Brewers have never won the World Series, the Padres, the Seattle Mariners, and Tampa Bay. Diamondbacks won their only one in twenty in 2001. Of course, the Cleveland Indians won in 1940-what? 1940-something, right? Isn't that what they're famously crowing about? I mean, Yeah, like 447? Something like that. They're also trying to figure out why viewership is way down in the World Series because it was seven years ago, tonight, Game 7, Indians-Cubs. Man, that was seven years ago. Seven years ago I tonight. I exactly where I was. It was crazy. What When the Cubs, and it, it, it was, you know, everybody thought I was rooting for the Cubs. I'm a White Sox fan. I don't cross the streams. I was rooting for the Indians. But it what both teams did not have a championship or hadn't had one for a million years or whatever. Beginning of the 20th century, right? And so whoever won, it was going to be breaking a long streak. But they got 40 million viewers. And in current television numbers, that's massive. So they're trying to figure out why viewing is just way down on these things. Wait, this year they got 40 million? 
No, no, no. Oh, that was, the Cubs, the Indians, Cubs Indians game Indians, yeah. seven. Yeah, seven well, years was, ago was forty million. That years. was a huge World Series. Yes. Also went to seven games. Yep. So and you know it was the first time like the Cubs had a chance to win. So it was talked about. Everything a lot. was on the line for both teams. I don't yeah. know a Rangers fan. I don't know a Diamondbacks fan. And I know people from those places. Yeah, I know a couple of Diamondbacks. But fans. like I don't, you know, they're those are not the same kind of fan bases as the Cubs. Yeah. But the Cubs and Indians, Indians game seven years ago tonight, that was the most watched World Series game in twenty five years. And so they're trying to even though the White Sox won one first, mm -hmm. anywho, don't forget. I know it's a Cubs town, but you know, let's call it what it is. How were the numbers on that one? <laughs> I, I I don't know, but I'd just like to point out, again, so they're trying to figure out why nobody watches the World Series. They got 9 million viewers. Nine? 9 million viewers for the Diamondbacks Texas Rangers. It's just so long, that's it's, why. Well, also just... But this only won it, five games, right? It doesn't matter. It, people don't. People atten people's attention spans are like this. Like you. But they still get those massive numbers for college games. I think people. I are, mean, they are viewing in and out. Like they're. I don't think you sit and watch the entire game. Like you're doing other stuff, or you're turning the channel and watching something else. They're saying that this World Series might be the lowest rated of all time. Last I year's. It. Last year's was the Astros over the Phillies, and they said that was the second lowest they ever had. And they think that this might be the lowest they've ever had. Baseball just isn't a – when it comes – if your team's out, I think most people are just out on baseball. Right. And so, like, the NBA Finals, you'll, you'll pop in and check in on that. But also every year, 80% like of, of the fans aren't fans of the teams in the World Series. Right, but that's what I'm saying. It's important when there's a storyline like the Cubs – like yeah. that, that, that made it really ex exciting. Now you'd think you'd have a little bit more of that with a team that's never won after being in existence for 63 years, but Major League Baseball just doesn't have that uh, nostalgia factor like it used to. Yeah. Like people w used to tune in because it was America's pastime, and I think people are kind of over baseball. Hmm. I didn't watch any of it. I, I saw it on at bars, but I didn't, I, I didn't really pay attention. The guy that won... Uh, the MVP. I never even heard of this dude. He won MVP <laughs> before. He won World Series. He's a two-time World Series MVP. An incredible accomplishment. I can't remember his name right now. Corey Seager. That's it. I didn't even know who this dude was. <laughs> who did he win the other one with? Who was he? I thought he was with the Dodgers before the Rangers, wasn't okay. he? Okay. Uh, news to me. Okay. That's how I checked out on baseball I am. Yeah. Corey Seager. And if you watch any sports... Like on on ESPN or or Fox Sports, they don't talk about baseball that much. They talk a little bit about basketball, a lot about football, mostly about football. Yeah, people love football. Football boy. is well, football's Smash Mouth. It's Smash Mouth, but it's also once a week, so it's easier to follow because every week you're building up to that game that's on Sunday that's or true. Monday night. Yeah, where every when there's a baseball game every night, there's not as much build up for those games you can ignore 80 percent of them and still be caught up right kind of you know you check in at the middle of the season well, the either, end of the or, season or you can be one of those people that follows every single game and knows exactly what's going on but that's just it's a ton of time to invest yeah and that's borderline psychotic behavior right let me give you some money here it's one thousand dollars it's uh put a little money in your pocket courtesy of the buzzard bookie holidays are coming up who doesn't need it so good luck this is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Bank. That's bank. Enter it now at WMMS.com. Speaking of coming into some money, I was reading about this guy in North Dakota whose girlfriend poisoned him because he had just come into a massive inheritance. Is there a couple? Oh, okay. Did you read about this? I did not, but is I, th I thought it was, this is going to be about washing your hands. No. Because after you handle money, you never know what somebody did before it. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you got to make sure you wash your hands. So this okay. woman who, who says that she was entitled to some because she was the guy's common law wife, even though North Dakota doesn't recognize common law spouses, 
The woman has been charged, a couple of hill rods living in the middle of nowhere, right? Uh, the woman is 47. The guy was 51 years old. Uh, she poisoned him with antifreeze because he was going to collect a $30 million inheritance check. Woo. Now, there are no, just follow me on this, okay? Follow okay. me. There are no, this is what, this is why I'm always crowing about asking follow-up questions because people just don't do it especially it, it, from decisions ranging to the small and the mundane to one involving $30 million. People just don't ask questions. So Stephen Riley gets an email saying that he has inherited $30 million, and he's going to go to the Minot Airport there in North Dakota, and he's going to fly somewhere to collect it. The girlfriend poisoned him, and he died in the hospital two days later Ooh. because she wanted some of that money. I don't know why you wouldn't wait until he had the Secure money. The bag, and then, you dumb bitch. Right. Ugh. Well, um, the guy's son, these two weren't married. They'd been living together. The guy's son is in the military, and he says it that it there was no money. It was an online scam that these two fell for, that the guy fell for. <laughs> so the guy's, say. the guy's dead. And so you got two nobody's living in the middle of nowhere, and somehow this guy thinks he's inherited $30 million from a say, relative. And, and a check, I, I, now, I don't know much about money, I don't have a lot of money, but do, it, does that come in check form? Usually when they Yes, say, a giant, comically large check say, at the usually, airport. Usually when you get an inheritance, it comes in a trust, which is presented to you by a, a, a financial advisor, someone who is delegated to handle that trust. People in such bad shape, and you kind of can't, blame them people in such financial straits are they're just their mind is clouded with the thoughts of oh my god i'm rich i gotta mm -hmm. go get this money here's what i'm gonna do with it the son is like my dad's dead he got an email from a guy who said he was a lawyer say it with me for an unknown distant relative oh. and had to meet him at the airport to sign off on the cash and he said, my dad was convinced he had inherited this money. Why would you ever be convinced that you had inherited $30 million from a relative you don't know? Everybody thinks they have relatives somewhere who are crazy rich. This is that lottery mentality. Mm -hmm. No follow-up questions at all. I know what mine's a scam. The Everybody kid's like, my, the kid's like, my dad was going to get acres of land. He was going to give me and my brother a chunk. He already had it spent in his mind. He was going to open his own auto shop. <laughs> But it was all a scam. And the woman had already poisoned him or something. And so he start, He didn't feel good. He goes to the hospital, and he's dead two days later. And the kid flies home. He's, a, he's on a military base in Texas. He flies home. His dad's in the hospital. And he's like, you wouldn't believe this house they're living in. He's like, there's trash everywhere. There's dog poop all over the place. Mm. And... So, but so ironically, this woman, because North Dakota doesn't recognize common law, she would have never had a claim to the money, even if it was real. <laughs> but I would think you'd go, get a lawyer or something. Again, pe like people just else. people or just, just get ask pregnant. One She's forty-seven years old. You try really hard. Ugh, not if you saw a picture of this woman. You don't. Say, you don't know that her eggs are all dried up now. Like they could be. You don't know if she's in menopause. Mm. I got $30 million. I'm going to get it. So she put antifreeze or Windex or something in his beer bottle. And um, he died two days later. She's looking at life without parole uh, for it. And uh, no $30 million. But, man, people just, their brains turn to mush when there's that much money. I feel like these the people, line. their brains were already pretty much mush. I guess, but again, you don't have to be a genius. Email. You don't have to be a genius to call a lawyer and say, "Hey, what should I do?" Right. That's what I'm saying. They were already mush when they got the email. The fact that they thought this email was legit is pretty mush-brained. Yeah. And then the fact that she, even if it had been legit, she killed him before she could have gotten yeah, before he got the so money. Weird. Like it's such a they got the order of operations. In committing this kind of crime is wait till they have the money and then do the crime. Yeah. Don't 
Like, do okay, it before they get the, the crime. Bag, you dumb bitch. Yeah. I believe I'm quoting you properly. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. People's thoughts on the World Series here. Ratings are low because watching baseball is like watching paint dry. Nobody cares about those teams. It's not the Red Sox, Yankees, Dodgers, Astros, Cubs. You had the team with the fifth best record versus the team with the 12th best record. Well, yeah. also, uh, you have a team. Philly's got a huge fan base, and at, Houston's a big market, but they had low ratings last year, too. Yeah, It's going to be a national, like, interest cable and streaming rights derailed the mlb somebody says they do a horrible job of marketing their players they do that oh, absolutely that it's Base a it's a death by a thousand uh cuts for sure game one was on saturday during college football and game two was during monday night football yeah that's not great scheduling baseball is fueled by gambling it's the best sport to profit on and it's on every day oh i know that when i'm on fanduel mm -hmm. making my uh bets for my White Sox, always winning. I've got to take a break here. If you want to send a text, 35192, just like those people did. You can watch live.